Hello and a very warm welcome to this Bitwig tutorial. In this episode I talk about the Delay Plus device that is a delay reverb device, reverbish device in the series of the Plus devices, but let's get started. So this is the Delay Plus device. Maybe I load a fresh one because I used it already, played with it around. And this is the fourth device. We had already um, three devices before, the three, the Delay 1, Delay 2. Delay 1 is the mono um, delay, Delay 2 is the stereo delay with uh, crossfeed and detune. And the delay four is a multi-tap um, delay where you can create uh, very complex delays. And now we have another delay in the series of the um, plus devices. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Only a little bit. <clears throat> and. Um, in these devices, uh, they are, these devices are um, like um, yeah, they have some pre-configuration, pre-modulation, um, something maybe not really like a um, preset, but they are more complex and not that basic like the other um, devices where you can configure everything on your own. And here you have some pre-configured configurations. Let's say it like that. So let's go over the device itself and I will jump a little bit around because um, um, for the explanation it's maybe um, a little bit easier if I jump um, from the one to the other and don't do it like uh, in series. So there's an um, on-off uh, knob, then there's a preset knob, this is the title bar, here are the remote controls and here uh, the modulation um, modulations yes okay and um, then the whole big device begins with this row uh, column sorry with this column and in this column you have four different uh, settings like uh, the mono setting so then you have a mono device where you can just mono um, your sound then you have a stereo uh, delay maybe I just play something the stereo delay the ping pong delay and the ping pong in, in the other direction so these are uh, the four ways you can configure these, uh, this device um, um, to uh, delay your sound, um, to make some effect. And um, all um, configurations, the mono the, and the three stereo um, configurations are a little bit different. But let's have a look on the beat. I call it beat matrix or here is it called delay unit where you can configure like the the 16s eight of the 16s from one to eight then here you can um, um, configure that uh, to the uh, triplets and to the dotted devices and to the normal devices there you can click on the eighth notes so you have eight eighth notes and the quarter notes and uh, here you can just um, configure everything to work um, after specific time and the other three are um, uh, beat dependent so if you have a faster beat the delays will be faster as well and as well if the beat's slower the delays will be slower so and um, that's very basic so if you just play like this let me see the polysynth there's a little bit uh, too much reverb uh, release i'm sorry so that's better okay so this is the mono um, device and for the 
I didn't check that. You have you have um you have here something like the stereo detune. You always see it uh, down here in the um, info bar in the status bar. Um, this is a um, detune where you can detune your feedback echo. So um, normally you don't hear that very clear, but I turn up the feedback to 100%, a little bit of a soft delay and try to show you if I just play it and move this number around, you will hear um, the difference. Start over in the other direction. Oh, in the other direction. It's a little bit quiet. Maybe I should use the lower frequencies. Like this. Now you can hear that. So, and there's a uh, plus minus toggle in front of these numbers. And uh, this is a little bit similar, like uh, for example, the, in the Polymer device where you can detune every side a little bit. So if the toggle is off, there is a gen uh, general detuning of the sound. And if you toggle that on, there is like on the, on the one side, there is a detuning down on the other side is a detuning up. And this is very interesting because these um, differences in pitch gives the delay um, a special rhythm. So you can, if you if you just uh, use the um, stereo delay and put that on, let's say five milliseconds. Now I play something. <laughs> And if I don't do that, just use it like that. Just um, concentrate on the rhythm, how how the rhythm sounds, not on the um, uh, on the pitch or anything else. Just the rhythm. Again. Why is it so quiet? I want to have it a little bit louder. Okay, let's start it again. It's always the, the same rhythm, like on both sides. And if you start detuning one of the sides, like with five milliseconds or so, and you toggle on this, um, then you get this. If you don't notice, um, the left side will like lag behind a little bit and the right side is going a little bit to the front. So at the beginning, the first one, two, this is the same and then it starts to go different. Maybe if you look at the volume meter, you can see it as well if you don't hear that. Just do it like that, for example, and now watch.
Okay. So this is that parameter that is very interesting because of the, the different rhythms um, you could um, you could create. Maybe I just try it again with this one and then a faster way. A little bit more like that. The interesting part is that um, it drifts apart from each other and then reunites uh, reunite at, uh, at a later uh, point again, but with a different uh, timbre. And that's a very interesting uh, sound design feature, what you can use in ambient music, but you can use it as well in, in faster uh, music, higher BPMs, where you just use this as an effect or like a... Um, a uh, wall of sound thingy um, that you put behind something where you have a, a, a rhythmic, um, let's say, pad or something. Um, and there are some more possibilities what you can use with this, um, with this little option you have over here, just to use um, the detuning of the feedback echo with the um, feedback knob. It's very, very interesting. Okay. Then um, there is uh, the EQ where you can change the EQ uh, of the uh, delay. So you can um, um, set your sound like falling apart if you take away the frequencies. Um, I will just demonstrate it here with the sound. I hope it's working. Out. It's like the sound is falling apart. It's going away. It's leaving the scenery. So um, those EQ settings you have on, on several of those delays, and uh, you could you could use that in uh, as a pre-configuration like this, for example. I just used some settings. Didn't think about how how I should put them. Like let's say 300 hertz, and here we have. Uh, two and a half K. Here it's falling apart. But as I, as I showed you, you can use that like more uh, with in an automated way, maybe modulated, but I would automate that. So if you use it like that and then adjust those EQs. like that for example okay and one thing i um i think i forgot to tell the difference between the um, stereo mode and the mono mode is or one of the differences is if you are in stereo mode you have here this width control and in mono mode this width control turns into a panning control so if you have a, a mono reverb you can pan that on each side and this device and with the uh, stereo you could take away the stereo maybe you can switch not really that sounds weird if you switch in between okay 
So this is that. Then in stereo mode, you have additionally in the in the feedback uh, configuration, um, you can click on this little button over here in the feedback button, and you see in the you see in the inspector the crossfit stereo. And the crossfit stereo is nothing else that normally. Um, uh, a standard um, simple delay would just say okay i'm delaying that and the echo comes back to each ear so but in in the real world there's always if you get an echo back maybe from the right side um, there's the signal is coming to your right ear and maybe it's very weak but your left ear will get that signal signal as well with a little delay additional delay so this um, enhances the room a little bit so um, with headphones there's often um, such there are often such configurations because um, with normal monitor speakers or normal speakers um, you have this effect as well if you get a sound from from the right side or from the left side the other ear um, will have um, a little delayed signal and that makes the, the whole room and this is very interesting and very helpful even uh, especially when you know that a lot of people will listen to your music on um, on headphones for example and maybe you can hear that with higher notes <laughs> try something else because it's very difficult to hear and with crossfit on So it's only a subtle effect, but it's there. And um, if you listen carefully to it, maybe um, maybe use a better um, sound for that. I thought it, it should be okay, but it could be as well that I put too much um, drive on it right now. Um, but you can, um, uh, you can notice the differences what these um, cross-feeding is doing and um, as I said especially on headphones this could be very important um, for your song or for the audience as well so and then we have as well here the ducking and the ducking is uh, nothing else than if you have um, a sound going on a delay going on and you you get new sound in there like a new note um, then normally these uh, the the feedback sound or delay sound and the new sound they are completely uh, mixed up, and sometimes you want to want to have a more clear differentiation between a new note and the effect sound, and the ducking is nothing else than a volume ducking, and um, the volume ducking is, as you know, just ducks the effect signal and the fresh signal, let me let me call it like that, um, will be more clear on there. Uh, uh, dependent, uh, depends on how you set the ducking volume. So if I put that right now on 100%. without ducking
So um, that should be very clear. But um, there's a second thing with this ducking, um, because you notice that I'm, I'm really sure that is it's not like only that the um, let, let's say original signal or the new signal is coming in and you can hear it very clearly. It's doing um, some rhythmic change to the delay or to the reverb delay. So um, normally if there's no ducking going on and you, you are delaying that, the new sig signal will thicken up the whole um, signal with the effect signal like this or if I play longer notes. There is, there is something like uh, um, rhythmic going on, but um, if I turn up ducking, I could um, put another rhythm or a more um, um, obvious rhythm in this whole effect um, sound. So this is another way to give this whole delay reverbish thingy a little bit more structure, a little bit more movement in there um, uh, that you could use for your for your track. And it's not just a, a simple delay with some additional uh, modulation or something. There are a lot of parameters that you can use to modify your whole sound in that or to create new sounds. You could use the delay and the feedback and everything just with a polysynth or any other VST just to create some pads, for example, with rhythmics in there that you can dial in here with your with your speed or without uh, um, uh, the, the beat dependent um, delays and so on. And this is a very, very, very interesting. So, and with the um, ducking, we had the rhythmic and then there is this uh, snowflake and in the info bar you see forever off. This is forever off and this is forever on and this snowflake, this forever on says if I have a sound going on, a delaying going on and I click on the snowflake, it holds this um, delay, it never ends. So if I put it like that. And hold it. You see the feedback is turned off. And now I can play and the new notes are not added to the whole sound. And if I release this it returns to my feedback I turn a little bit down and with the feedback it fades out than at the end. So this could be as well a very um, interesting way of um, producing sound or tracks or using it in a, in a live performance. We just can hold the whole reverb and the whole delay. I always say reverb because sometimes I use this delay plus as a reverb <laughs> because it has these fantastic features. And then you just can hold it and you can play and um, you're uh, your new notes doesn't change this wall of sound, this pad that's going on. And if you want then to continue just 
click this snowflake away, this forever off, then <laughs> end, end forever, and then just uh, use the feedback to calm down your whole um, pad and sound and delay. And uh, yeah, this is really, really nice. So, and with the stereo um, delay options here, there is the width button and the width button is just a stereo width. If I play it like here, maybe I put it on mono. And in mono mode, it's the panning button. Like that. So, but, <laughs> but um, the width button has another option in the inspector and this is with effects feedback and this is um, very interesting too because um, you can play with this um, parameter as well at the end this parameter will do the following the um, width will um, affect the feedback so if feedback is going on and it's very stereo and you put that width back it reduces the stereo to nearly mono and um, when you uh, uh, turn up the width um, again the signal stays mono because you configure it then as mono and every new note you put in will start in stereo i will um, show you that what's in there like i'm not okay that's okay Now that's mono, put it back, it's still mono, now I'll play new notes. So with this um, with control and uh, the settings in the inspector with effects feedback you could just layer sounds above each other that begins in a stereo um, wide stereo field then reduces uh, reduce it to mono and add some more sounds in stereo and reduce it again so you have always this this movement from outside to inside. That's uh, as well a very interesting um, feature for production or even for live performances. Really great. I love this feature. <laughs> so, and um, the last thingy here is uh, the mix. And this is where you have the original signal and the only effect, the wet signal, and here you can put that on 50-50. <laughs> so um, you have both the signals the same, uh, the same amount. Okay, um, then there are some other controls in the inspector. And one of them is on change and update rate. These are, um, they are connected. And normally you know that using, let's use that and maybe a sound like a normal, like this. Um, if you, if the, if the delay is running and you change the speed of the delay or the beat um, of the delay, um, normal delays are on repitch. As you can see, keeps time changes audible. So every time you change the uh, time, the timing of the delay, you will hear it. Uh, let me demonstrate this for you. I 
take a very long delay. And now we switch it to second sixteenth. This effect. This could be a very nice effect if you want to use it. Let's change that back. Put that on standard three. Something like that, like um, scratching or something like that, or tape effect or something. You could use that. Um, that's a very, very easy tape effect. <laughs> um, and here you have the update rate. And the update rate, uh, update rate is uh, the speed, how fast the repitch is working or how fast the change is working. And this update rate is from one hertz to one kilohertz. So if I use one hertz, for example, I go again from here. Right. Again, this is not only just, uh, it's a bad thing, it's a good effect. No, you, you could use that for like effects for your um, for your whole track that you use um, a delay just to put that down like the tape is broken or something. And with the update rate higher than, I don't know, let's let's do the one kilohertz. Use it on three sixteenth. And this sounds like a broken loop and uh, another great effect. So there's, there's no, uh, no problem. There are always only effects and sound design um, hidden somewhere. And if you use something in between, the effect is a um, little bit different from it. So this tape is completely broken, but it's a great sound. You could build up a whole track from that sound. Maybe put it like that. Again, like... Just play with it, have the feedback on, so it doesn't lose volume and doesn't gain too much. You should record all that when you're playing around with that because sometimes you get really great results and uh, this is worth playing it so much especially when you're working a lot in audio uh, just creating some weird effects or something this is so so great okay this is uh, on changes repitch and the update rate and there's another thing the fade that cross fades when changing delay time and a fade is a fade so fade is always there to make things more smooth not so audible and i use the same extreme values like this and put that on here Like that and let's do it the other way around. Okay, it's, it's difficult to hear. And again, this is as well like a sound design feature where you can just, you heard it, uh, put some more rhythmic in your delays, record that and use that as a rhythmic pad or something. 
very 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 interesting and the same with the fast um, transition or fast fast um, fading let's use three and eight so you have always an odd and an even number so that's more audible Okay, like that. Good. So these are fade and repitch. Let's put that again on the default. This was fade and the update rate of 10 hertz. Um, and maybe one thing I should mention before I go uh, any further, the feedback FX container device. The feedback um, container device, um, they can put in some more effects or some other VSTs or anything else. But the most important thing about to know about the uh, um, feedback FX device or container is that you put in some when you put in some more effects or VSTs and they produce some latency, um, this container will automatically um, compensate for this latency. This should be uh, this is a very important um, information you have to have so you don't have to um, uh, compensate the latency manually. Okay and now we come to the level control and the level control has three different options and at least uh, at the end there are two because two of them are clippers one soft clip one hard clip and um, you know soft clipper they are uh, just trying if a, if a waveform going over zero uh, um, db and they're trying to um, um limit to the zero db and not just to cut the whole curve it just likes to um, put some more curves on it so that you can um, still see a long long time regardless um, how much you push the, your sound uh, higher or push the volume higher that you still can see okay this was a curve and not just a square and hard clip is just doing the opposite or doing even less maybe <laughs> it just clips it cuts the the wave so for the waveform so when it goes like a waveform like this and here's here's the um the limit of zero db it cuts it like this it's rectif uh, it's a rectification so that's why the sounds are a little bit different and soft clip sounds a little bit softer and um, doesn't produce that much um, high frequencies but a hard clip will produce um, a lot of um, high frequencies and sometimes you want that with a hard clip because on very low um, uh, frequency maybe you want some like a saturation but hard clip is a very hard saturation but that is one I will play that um, in a minute let's use um, this soft thingy and then you have the threshold and the threshold is nothing else like in a limiter or on a compressor where you set the level um, where these effects should happen or should start doing something so at the moment this is at zero db and i will turn that down a little bit so that the effect will um, start a little bit sooner before um, coming to zero db so if i play that now and um, i push the feedback then a little bit higher i stop talking right now oh wait let's take some lower frequencies So even I um, dialed in a lot of feedback, like 122%, and um, I pulled down the threshold of the soft clipping, and then you hear these crackling noises that are coming in. So let's try, let's do it the hard way again, and put the soft clicking, clipping on like to minus 12 dB or something, and with an open EQ.
It's a little bit like rain. Or like white noise. Or like a wind. There's so many sounds. Um. Something like this. Depends all what you're doing with the EQ, what you're cutting out. And the soft clip is still producing slightly high frequencies because I'm pushing the sound to the limit. And you could start only with that um, ambient music. Be careful of resonances. Like that. Okay, and let's start with the hard clip so you can hear that as well. Take the same chord, the EQ, and I play around with that and just listen to that. I will change the um, threshold and we'll change the um, feedback, push it to the max and maybe play around, or not maybe, but it will play around with the EQ as well. So have a listen. So with using all those effects together with the hard or soft clipper, you get different results. And as you can um, hear, there's a lot of things going on and um, changing. The whole timbre is changing. So you could just play with that, record that and use it like a, a whole instrument pad or maybe for some, I don't know, background noise or something like that a background um, atmosphere or something like you could create something like um, uh, engine rooms and, and stuff or like normal environment places with a deep or high frequency or something. This is very, very interesting. And then I always keep saying it's very interesting, but it is very, there are a lot of things that are very interesting. And um, I think you should, uh, um, there should be more focus on such things than just putting a delay somewhere on it and let let the sound uh, swing from left to right or just in mono a uh, little bit uh, modulation or something because the whole feedback topic is really maybe let let me say it like an own instrument um, you could you can play with a feedback so many beautiful and interesting things um, people seldom notice that or seldom use that but um, 
Yeah, it's it's really like um, this is all digital and and uh, maybe you're using all synth and everything, and feedback gives that a little bit more life and a little bit more like um, giving some uh, or reaching some some limits or breaking some limits or something. And this is so interesting and this is so big field what you can what you can use and uh, a lot of people don't use that or don't see that or don't know that. Maybe they know that but they forgot that because it's different approach of um, creating music. But um, it's very interesting. It's worth it. Um, to try it. So let's go to the last uh, level control here. This is a compressor model. And this is simply a compressor. If the sound gets too loud, it reduces the volume. And let me say that's it. <laughs> Maybe um, try to focus on what the um, how the sound changes. It it gets more compressed, more dense. If I use that, because I'm I'm working with the feedback against um, the compressor, and the compressor is working against the feedback. So the whole sound just loops through this feedback uh, loop and gets every time more and more compressed. And this is a slightly change in sound, but it's very interesting. Um, for example, if you want to create some more tense in the sound slowly, maybe don't do that like like me, a little bit uh, exaggerated. Uh, just do it a little bit more slightly, but uh, you can feel there's something going on. The, the sound is getting more and more tense. So I start again over here and use the same chord again. <laughs> Okay, and as you could hear, um, the way I changed the EQ over there um, was like there was a rhythmic going on, and with the EQ I um, I worked against this rhythm and just uh, um, calmed it a little bit down. And when opening the EQ again, the rhythm came a little bit back. So this is the same thing, like using this, using a, a delay with this compressor reducing the whole sound because everything is compressed it gets more like a, um, a slick st structure or maybe a, like a polished structure let me say it like that and then it gets this rhythmic and uh, with this rhythmic you work with the eq and everything and i didn't even use the uh, um, I, I used the crossfeed stereo as well and you could um, as well use the um, effect feedback with the width um, and so on and there are so many possibilities here just to combining um, all these options and um, using them in different ways because you have one two um, one two three four five six seven different ways without the ducking and the soft 
or, or this um, blur mount or blur option um, thingy. There are so many things you can use where the sound will change dramatically different from that what you hear um, actually from me. So it's worth it to really spend hours over hours with this device because it's so rich in creating some really interesting sounds. So these are the um, effects or the options of um, the inspector and at least uh, the thing that most people see <laughs> in the first place we, I will do it at last because um, this is very important too but this is more like let me say the the, the most obvious part so you have the no you have um, here different um, options over here and i would categorize this in uh, four different options this is the no blur this is a standard delay with um, just uh, the feedback and ducking and stuff and then you have um, a short diffusion networks the soft and the white and um, the description here is very good because um, soft just makes a soft diffusion network like this. Oh wait, open that up and open this one. Like this, very sim simple, because there's a, a lot of things going on like modulation stuff and um, if you listen um, carefully you notice some effects you already know, because on the white um, a short, uh, on the white short diffusion network with modulations and spread also um, there's more there's more <laughs> there's more there's um, more modulation going on, like uh, for example a chorus device and uh, some more stereo spreading um, I will show you that and then in comparison to the soft uh, or uh, yeah to the soft as well so This is more white and on the stereo um, option here always this with effects of feedback so if i use uh, this white more stereo control or let me use the soft control put it on mono and with the white it's more difficult to put it on mono. It goes slowly, but there are some modula some modulations are going on. So the, this whole um, with effects, the feedback is more difficult or more, um, let's say, more subtle. Okay, and then there are the long diffusion network. They um, work a little bit like the same, like on, on the reverb, it's uh, the... Um, the early reflection, the late reflections. So the long diffusion network uh, works a lot of with um, late reflections and the sound is like that. Now oh, wait, wrong button. And this is my favorite one. Could use it for days. And here you hear the chorus working like in a faster LFO way because it's detuning and some more stuff. So these are pre-configured um, um, delays or delay re re um, reverbish delays or something. <laughs> and um, uh, the last one is the reverse. This is just uh, taking the sound and reverse it to the end. There is at the end. There is a feedback going on. Oh, I wanted to switch on the spectrum, but the most things you heard maybe it's not so important to see it. It's a nice feature, but okay. So this is 
maybe you could say if you use a um, audio sample then put it on uh, the uh, duplicate it and reverse the other one so it swells um, to a higher volume and swells down again so this is the reverse one and um, yeah um, I would highly recommend to experiment with this device because this is a very sound rich device where you can use a lot of different options to combine with, with each other and again I can't emphasize this enough um, use feedback play with the feedback try to create sounds or when you um, are producing a track and you're stuck or, or something like that just put the put the um, feedback somewhere on a controller knob or something and then at one point put it up and play with the feedback try to keep it in, in on its limits that you want so it doesn't get too loud it doesn't get too quiet just play with it and keep it alive for example and try to use the EQs as well to change the, the timbre of the sound and really experiment with that. Um, that's really good uh, advice, <laughs> good device and advice um, to create um, nice sounds because just using the delay as a normal, de the delay plus as a normal delay is okay, but you're wasting a lot of good options for your, for your sound. And even if you're not so experimenting or experimental with uh, those things, just try it a little bit. Just try to create some pads with the with the forever on off with the um, feedback and so on. Feedback is really put some more focus on feedbacks. This is um, um, how you say a loophole for good sounds and interesting stuff. Um, yeah, um, as well for the whole ping pongs. And yeah, everything um, spent days with this device. And um, every time you use it, just try something new. Don't throw just a delay on something and use it. You can do that. It's really great sounding, but you could have more of it if you just ask it, <laughs> ask your devices. Okay, I hope um, this was interesting for you and I could, um, um, bring you to some new ideas and make you curious about some things like feedback. I will mention that uh, as long as this video is going on. <laughs> and um, yeah, experiment with that. If you uh, have some um, interesting ways to use, for example, the delay plus or the other delays, for example, just tell me, uh, put it in, in the comments. And when I'm um, talking about the comments, I would ask you to kindly to do this, maybe. Because this helps the channel and me and um, it always makes um, fun to um, read from you what you are doing or um, that I get a clue um, uh, where you are, maybe. Or, I, it's very interesting for me to know and um, again if you have some tips and tricks um, that are really nice or maybe just basic it's okay um, just tell me tell the others because um, people will read uh, comments and it would be very nice from you if you just share your knowledge or your ideas or maybe you just didn't try that and you want to use and or want to ask or um, just put uh, there are some notes this helps the channel to grow and um, keeps me always motivated to do some new videos so i hope this was interesting it was a very long video but i hope you enjoyed it and um, i hope i will see you soon again so stay healthy see you ciao ciao